Albert Garry was born in Paris in 1938 at the start of World War II. Before his second birthday, the Germans had invaded and he went into hiding with his family. My mother would take my sister and me and we would go to the back room and she would hush me like that, say, don't say a word. Now 76, Garry still clearly remembers the liberation of Paris. We saw the tanks, the jeeps, the soldiers with friendly faces giving uh, chewing gum, giving uh, cigarettes. That was one of the most wonderful moments in my life, actually. She was Sharing his story is second nature to Gary, who is one of about 60 active survivor volunteers at the Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C. They give tours, translate documents, and talk with visitors. But with the youngest of them in their 70s, the opportunity to hear firsthand accounts could soon fade away. You know, that's a fact of life. Uh, we're not going to be immortal. Someday, maybe in 20 years from now, there will be no survivors, that's for sure. So uh, we have to, to live with that, and that's why it's so important to pass the message to the next generations. Museum administrators are also concerned. I think both the museum and the survivors feel a sense of urgency an urgency to make sure that we've documented as many Holocaust stories as we can. Um, the museum is in a race against time. More than 7,000 prisoners were liberated from Auschwitz in January 1945, but only around 300 attended the commemoration this year in Poland. At the museum, the construction of a new facility to house artifacts will begin this spring. And while time poses some problems, for volunteer translator Rita Rubinstein, Making it to 78 is a victory in itself. I'm here, and he didn't succeed in what he wanted to do. He wanted to kill all the Jews and all the traces of the Jews. But I have a wonderful family. I have three children and eight grandchildren, and that's my revenge to Hitler. When the last survivors have gone, it will be up to their families and institutions like the Holocaust Museum to keep their voices alive.